Welcome to Manitic Stringworks. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more video content. Hey there, well on the workbench today we have this really nice Norman guitar. So this is a Canadian made acoustic guitar. The model is a B20. So the owner dropped it off here because it was his dad's, uh, still his dad's, <laughs> but his dad is older now and is not really playing guitar much so he's taken it over. And just wants a string change and a setup and you know make sure everything's working well so let's get in a little closer and have a look so this guitar has a nice spruce top maple sides and back I'll flip it over in a minute the model is a b20 like I mentioned earlier and I believe that serial number and sticker would get this to probably 1989 Looks like a rosewood uh, fingerboard, some dot inlays, interesting pattern, and there's the headstock. So I skipped over it pretty quick because here's one of the big features of this guitar. See, look at that, there's two big hex screws right here. It's because this is actually a bolt-on neck. And if I flip around to this side, you'll notice that we're missing a heel. There is no heel on this guitar. So the neck, you can see the joint right there, goes right into the body. And inside the sound hole, we're going to see a large heel structure. So let's, uh, let's see if we can have a peek inside. So there's a little closer look at the inside. So we can see the neck. And there's the truss rod adjustment. And then below you'll see this large heel structure. So that actually is all inside the guitar, goes underneath the top of the soundboard. And along with these two hex screws right here, or bolts I should say, we have two on the underside of the guitar as well. There we go. So those are covers, really just to cover up the bolts that go under there. So pretty interesting design. I know it's not traditional to have a bolt on neck for most acoustic guitars. I know Taylor does it. But uh, from a guitar tech and service point of view, it makes a lot of sense. All right, well, let's check the setup of this guitar uh, as it came in. So this guitar has a pretty low action as it stands right here and the owner told me that it's just been sitting in the case, nothing done to it. It rings really nicely, lots of volume. Let's see what the string height is at the 12th fret. So I'm going to start with 5 on my, so 564 so on my gauge. I'm just scraping, well that's about, that's more or less than that. So we'll go to four, 64s. Just barely get under the first string. Yeah, so that's some nice low action. Here's a 664, so let's see. Okay, I can't even get it under the strings, right? So, so we're about five to four 64s, which is really nice or an acoustic guitar, of course. So I'm curious to see what the action is like at the first fret, so the nut action, I, I suspect is pretty low, so I've got 18 thousandths here. Ugh. Um. Yeah, so I, I'm going to say it's between 16 and 18 thousandths. 
which is pretty low and might need to revisit the nut at some point but right now there's no buzzing coming out of this area at all so I think that's good for now so I'm trying out a couple of new camera angles so let me know in the comments if you like these angles or you like what you're used to watching but I thought I'd give it a whirl sometimes you can see things a little better so what I'm going to do now is just check the neck relief. Um, again, I think our neck relief is probably going to be very nice. I'm expecting it to be ten thousandths or less at the seventh fret. So capo on the first. Let me take a ten thousandths feeler gauge. I'm going to push down right here where the neck meets the body, and the seventh fret. Ooh, I can't really get that under. I suspect we're probably in the six to seven thousandths range. So that's pretty low, but again, no buzzing. So if there's no buzzing, <laughs> why change it, right? So I like that. So when we do a string change, and we're going to use these, these are D'Addario custom light gauge 11 to 52s, 80 20 bronze. And the strings that are on this guitar right now are 12s, 12 to 54s. So putting a little lighter gauge on over the long term will help this guitar keep its shape. <laughs> Less tension on the neck and the bridge. Also, if you were to drop this guitar, let's say it was in the case and you have it at full tension like this, and you drop it, it might actually you know, lead to breakage. A little less tension is better. Flip that over. Of course, I always recommend to people that if you're going to take an acoustic car, guitar and just leave it in your case for a long time, not play it too much, I would definitely detune, you know, a half step at least. You don't have to totally loosen or slacken it, just a half step, just to take a little bit of tension off the guitar, and that'll just help it keep its nice shape and not have any issues in the future. I think it's time we take the strings off this guitar, clean it up a little bit, maybe have a look inside <laughs> and see what's going on in there. All right, let's do it. So I recently got this D'Addario string winder. My other one broke, <laughs> a cheapy plastic one I had. So this is kind of interesting. So it's got the string winder. Just for guitars though, not for basses. Uh, there's a slot here, I shouldn't say that. There's a slot that goes across that you could put it through a large bass tuner. It's got snippers. And it's got actually an acoustic bridge pin puller, which I'll get to try out today too. So that's pretty cool. So let's use, so I've already used it to unwind the strings. Let's say I'm gonna snip them now. Hey, it snipped. <laughs> yeah, the, the snippers aren't as easy to use as some cutters, right? <laughs> That's a little, a little better. But I think as a tool that you throw in your gig bag, right, or your case, this would more than do the trick for that kind of thing. It's a good string winder. All right, let's see how this. Uh, puller goes. I think you're supposed to hook it underneath. I'm going to give it a yank. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
Uh, how does that work as opposed to this little plastic thing I got free with something else? <laughs> that one works pretty well. I think it's okay as well. Again, something that you throw in your gig bag to help you, uh, you know, in case you have an emergency <laughs> or need a quick string change. Well, as promised, I said I'd try and get in here a little closer. <laughs> So you can see how this is built. So I'll use the mirror. And so those are the bolts right up top. And you can see underneath. I guess what you can't see are the two bolts that go into that heel from the bottom of the guitar. And they have those chrome caps on them. All in all, it looks pretty sturdy to me. I don't think that's going anywhere. You know, and this is a 30-year-old plus guitar, and it's really in good shape, the neck. All right, well, let's clean it up and get some strings on it. So, yeah, I mean, well, there's some fret wear. Not too bad. It's more cosmetic than anything. I think the fret erasers will take that out, most of it. For sure, up here, in the first fret, there's the tiniest of divots. Yeah, a little bit right there, right on the B string. But other than that, it's not too bad. Of course, the fretboard's dirty, a little dry. And then we'll oil up the bridge as well. All right, let's give this thing a cleaning. Alright, so I finished with the fret erasers and I finished up with some 4 odd steel wool. And I think we can see that these frets, yeah, they shine now. <laughs> they look good in that light. They gotta get the, right, the light in the right way. But this is by no means a fret polishing. This is more of what I would call a fret cleaning. Polishing would take a lot more time, but these this the result of the cleaning with the fret erasers and then using the 4 rod steel wool is a really nice result Just the same There we go. All right All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is oil the fretboard and the bridge, and I like to use this Dunlop 65. They call it Ultimate Lemon Oil. I've had this bottle for a long time. Works well. Just put it on, nice coat. I let it sit for 20, 30 seconds. And just wipe it off. And normally you don't have to do this every time you change your strings. I would recommend, you know, every maybe twice a year. But again, it depends on how humid the conditions are in your location.
there. I think that looks a lot better, right? <laughs> and don't forget to do the bridge. That gets dried out too, like the fingerboard. Alright, so we've got the strings off. We've cleaned up the fretboard and the frets. Before I string it up, I just want to check all the tuners. See if they're tight. So, using a 10 millimeter wrench here, we'll go by and tighten these. Oh, yeah, they're loose. And again, over time, oh, yeah, that one's really loose. <laughs> over time, what happens is the wood shrinks and loosens all the hardware. So, it's always a good idea. I would probably say every string change. Just to check, you know, certainly once a season, check and make sure that your hardware is tight. Hmm, that's interesting. There we go. Now, most string companies will include some sort of little guide or legend to their strings, and of course, they have the colors on the ball end. So, check it out. Sometimes you have some that are really close, especially in the B and the E or the G and the B string. So this one, the six string is the brass and the A string is the red one. That's pretty obvious to see, but they're close in gauge, relatively close. But anyways, you know, don't be afraid to consult the guide that they give you. So of course what we want to do is take the string, the ball end, and we're going to bend it at a red angle, like that. We're going to take our bridge pin, and we're going to push that ball end in, and then catch. You want to catch that groove, right? Right in there. So it pushes down. So I'm going to push that in. Make sure we're touching the bottom of that ball end and get it in there. Again, don't worry too much right at first because it might want to pop out a little bit as you tighten the tension. I'm going to go ahead and put all the strings in. I lied. I'm not going to put all the strings in right away. <laughs> so here we're going to string this up. So what I like to do is locate the hole in the post in line with the nut. So here we have the six string. We're going to pull this through. And then I, you know, we don't want to cut anything off yet. So what I'll do is I'll take the one, two, probably only need one and a half, but we'll do two. Pull it back through. And I just bend it up no need for any fancy luthier knots or anything like that. And then we're going to start turning this. Now you got to make sure the windings go under the string that's come through the post hole. Right? And that's going to create the tension on the string. Keep it in tune. Yeah, it's, going to be, it's going to be too much, I can tell. Sometimes, you know, I always err on the long side for a string. So you don't want to cut it short, right? Yeah, see, like that would be perfect, but we've got too much slack. So I'm going to back this off. I'll probably only, I'll go one and a half, you know, and see what that gives us. There might only be one that we need on the six string because of the thickness of it. But, like I said, it's better to go a little longer, and that way we're sure. So, like I said, here, pull that through now. So we'll go to one and a half, which is about there. Okay. <laughs> and I will clip a little bit of this off, because that's way too much. Alright, let's wind this again.
I get a lot of comments about this. And, oh, you got one, one tuning post, two tuning posts. Measure it exactly one and a quarter inches. Well, you know what? Every guitar is a little different. Spacing's a little different. So, like I said, go a little longer, and then you can always back it off. Okay. All right. So I'm happy with the wraps. Again, we have two or three wraps on the E, A, and D strings, and then a few more wraps, of course, on the G, B, and E strings. But what I like to do now is just take a flathead screwdriver and just get under there, do a little twist to make sure that everything's nice and snug. That's good. Before I tighten this up, the tension, full pitch. That just ensures if there's any slack. We're taking the slack out right away. Making sure those strings are nice and tight. There we go. Okay. All right, so I've got the guitar tuned up for the first time with the new strings. As close as I'll get. <laughs> okay, now we're going to stretch them out, so grab the strings at the 12th fret, give them a good yank. This will help seat them in the bridge pins as well as up at the tuning machines. And it'll take out some of the slack in the string, especially on the wound string, so E, A, D, and the G. Not so much on the plain strings. But if you give those a good pull, three, four times like this, that'll help with the tuning stability. And then the initial tuning stability. So it should be out of tune now. <laughs> Let's see how much, yeah, there's a full, like a half step. I usually find it's about a half step. Well, that wasn't so much on the D. Geez, not so bad. Alright, so now I'm going to let this sit overnight. Check it again tomorrow might have to tweak the truss rod a little bit because we have lighter gauge strings on here but we'll see how it reacts overnight all right so here we are the next day the guitar has kept itself in good tuning let's check the neck relief capo on the first fret now i suspect because there were 12 gauge strings on here before now we have 11 gauge there's going to be less tension on the neck which means that it's going to straighten out a bit so I expect there to be a little bit of buzzing so you can imagine if you're fretting here on the first fret the sixth string is buzzing a little bit and I'm not surprised I think we need a little bit of relief because when we checked it when it came in originally it was <laughs> it was probably around six thousandths. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can't really even get a ten thousandths under there. So I normally like to see guitars with about ten thousandths of an inch relief because really when you're strumming, you know, you want to have a little bit of room for those strings to bounce around a bit. So for this guitar, the truss rod adjustment is right here in the sound hole. It's actually really accessible too. It's right there at the front of the heel. And I think, I suspect it's a four millimeter. So I'm going to reach in my tool drawer here and pull out an assortment of four millimeters. So it's always good to have a bunch, you know. So here's a T-handle version. Nice and long, and if you have straight access, especially at a headstock, 
Here's a really long right angle four millimeter. Has a ball end too. And that's for like a Martin guitar or somewhere where it's hidden way back there at the at the block. This one's right at the front. This one won't even really fit in there, so no. I've got this four mil, which is one I made <laughs> just with some dowel. And it's you know, about two inches long. That'll probably work in there. Might be a little too long. Yeah. There we go. So I have to move the strings quite a bit. I'll probably loosen them. Also got a little shorter one. Again, another homemade four millimeter. This is an old scratch all <laughs> handle. And I repurposed it for this four millimeter hex head, which I think is going to be the winner here. Yeah, that fits in there really snug. Now, of course, we want to loosen, right, the neck. So we're going to go counterclockwise, so to the left. So I'm going to start with about a, see if I can get a quarter turn here. It's making noise. There we go. Okay. Turned pretty well. Let's see if that did anything. Still having a hard time getting that 10,000 under there. Can we turn it a little more? I might have to loosen the strings here to get this lined up. Okay, well I've loosened the truss rod as much as I want to at the moment. Let me take this capo off. See if we still have that buzz. So that buzz is gone now from the sixth string. So all tuned up. No buzzing. So it looks like this guitar can take a nice low neck relief of about eight thousandths at the seventh fret, which is good. So let's have a quick look at the string height. It was nice and low before. just around 464 and if I use the string gauge here check it yeah we're just just there at 464 just a hair higher on the sixth string and the fifth string and then down to four by the time we get to the first string so that's that's really nice Again, no buzzing. Good. Well, that's about all I'm going to do to this guitar. I'm going to snip off these strings, clean them up. It already had a very low action. We've changed the string gauge to a lighter gauge. And now we still have a nice low action. Plays really nicely. That's a good sound. Rings out really well. Well, I'm sure that the owner will have many more years of enjoyment from this nice Norman B20. So, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.